So it is 2018 and we've seen a ton of sneaker cushioning technologies come and go through the years. Some of them were definitely more painful than others, literally. But in this video, I wanna focus on the good stuff. This is the top five sneaker cushioning technologies of 2018. This video is a top five best sneaker cushion technologies of 2018, but please note, this is obviously just strictly based on my opinion. And if you have a difference in opinion, which you will, I, I seriously know that, feel free to just comment in the comment section and let me know what your favorite tech is. A few runner up sneaker technologies worth mentioning, the Saucony Everrun technology, which I love, the New Balance Fresh Foam, which I haven't personally tried, but I've heard great things about it. The Hoka One, which is basically more of a running shoe and really hasn't broke out into the casual side of things as far as I can see. So let's go ahead and start the top five. So the number five spot goes to the Adidas Future Craft. This is a new technology that has been talked a lot about in the last year and with good reason. The Futurecraft is a new creation between Adidas and Carbon, which utilizes Carbon's digital light synthesis technology to create midsoles out of a liquid resin material for the first manufactured 3D printed midsole for personalized performance products. I already did create a video describing the technology in a lot more detail, and if you guys wanna see that, check the link in the description. This sneaker technology, though, could be the key to the future for personalized cushioning, since they aim to have this tech available on demand in stores for consumers to have their midsoles individually tailored to your feet. You basically run on a treadmill, and then it maps your foot, they print out your midsole on the spot, and then you have your own personalized pair of shoes. Now that's the future thought of Futurecraft. We're a long ways for actually having that in stores, but why is the Future Craft in the top five sneaker cushionings? For me personally, I have to admit, even though it's heavier than what I would want, it's definitely a comfortable sneaker cushioning technology. And you can thank the over 20,000 struts in the midsole for that comfort. I did a detailed review of the Future Craft already and I wore it for an entire month. And I have to say, I still find myself going back to that shoe and just wearing it casually when I wanna go to the store or wear it to work or whatever it might be, just because it was a really comfortable shoe and my foot really got used to that cushioning style. Future Craft is rumored to be releasing on at least 100,000 pairs publicly in 2018, which means more people will be able to give these a try and soon you guys will be able to see if you guys agree with this being a contender for one of the best sneaker technologies available. The number four spot goes to the Under Armour Hover technology. I can't say that I saw this coming. Under Armour made a solid contribution into the sneaker technology market in 2018 with Hover. This features an energy web system, which is a mesh fabric that wraps the cushioning cord to deliver responsiveness and energy return, a term we've definitely heard a lot of. But for $100 at the entry level price point, I can say that these things actually deliver as promised. It is similar to Nike Lunarlon since it does feature an encased foam, but it almost feels more like a Lunarlon 2.0. Matched with the Speedform 2.0 sock liner, the comfort is definitely worth the price point. And on the Hover Phantom, the sneaker felt well cushioned, but it also felt durable with the outsole and the upper combined. I did do a review on that shoe as well, and I'll link it in the description. They do have two different versions of the Phantom out there, one with connectivity and one without. I heard Under Armour has a lot of issues with their data right now, so I would definitely probably stay away from the connected version. But regardless, I'm waiting to see if this technology expands further into basketball or other sports. Like I wonder if we're gonna have a Curry 6 with Under Armour Hover. <laughs> Number three, we have the Nike React technology. This is the newest technology by Nike that has people reacting. Ha ha ha. Good one, huh? It was first featured in 2017 on the Nike React Hyperdunk 2017 and the Jordan Superfly. However, those didn't change the game too much since it was React foam encased in a midsole. But the Epic React Flyknit that was released in 2018 really changed the course for Nike's new tech. The material is light, it's well cushioned, it's responsive, and although people think that it took notes from the Adidas Ultra Boost, it has left a good impression on most of the consumers. The only downside has been the visible durability of the material. But a lot of people have said even though it looks really bad, it actually is still very durable. Nike already released the Casual Vapor Street with React, and the Odyssey React is gonna be out later in April. The best part is the price point isn't too terrible, the Epic React is only 150 in comparison to competition like the Adidas Ultra Boost, which is 180. The future of Nike cushioning for casual and performance consumers is looking pretty positive. And while we're on the subject for Nike, they also take the number two spot in my countdown with Zoom X. This might have actually been my number one spot on the countdown, but unfortunately we've only seen one model to release. Uh, with the Zoom X and that is the Zoom Vaporfly 4%. I'm not really counting the Vaporfly Elite since it only had like a really, really small actual release and I think it was like 100 pairs or something like that. The Zoom X cushioning technology though is really quite amazing. And in the Vaporfly 4%, I definitely shop for groceries 4% faster as I previously mentioned. 
So why is this so good though? In summary, it's like Nike React, but it's more than 4% better. This foam is lighter, it's softer, and due to the carbon fiber plate that's sandwiched between the Zoom X, it feels like a rocking rocket ship with every single step. The only downside is the shared issue with the Epic React and that's the durability on the sole. In this case, it's probably even worse than React. Um, the price point also at $250 is kind of outrageous, but I cannot wait for more people to actually be able to try this stuff out. I think it's really amazing technology and it's definitely worth the buzz even at that $250 price point, but I do really want this to be delivered in a casual shoe model. I know Nike doesn't really focus on that too much, but we did see some progress with the Air Max 270 air unit. More models are rumored to be releasing in 2000. 2018, including the Pegasus Turbo, which looks absolutely amazing if this is actually the shoe we've seen images of. Zoom X is also going to be on a track spike called the 4% Matumbo, but it will be interesting to see where they take this and the price points in the future of Zoom X. It's definitely more of the flagship technology in comparison to more of the budget friendly React. <laughs> All right, we made it to the number one spot on the countdown. If you guys are enjoying the content, please like the video, share the video, subscribe to my channel, comment, make fancy homemade cards and send them to me and then mail me some gluten-free chocolate chip cookies. Anyways, the number one spot goes to Adidas Boost. I know, big surprise, especially on this channel because if you guys are subscribed to this channel, you guys know I've been talking about Adidas Boost before the Ultra Boost was even invented. So tried and true for the last five years in running, the Adidas Boost technology still holds the number one spot because the material has just been engineered to perfection in my opinion. I already did a video explaining what Adidas Boost is in detail if you guys wanna check that video again in the description. But while it looks like a styrofoam, it really is not. There's thousands of super springy pellets made from thermoplastic polyurethane, also known as TPU, that are fused together to create an experience for your feet that is not easily replicated. Those that know, no. Boost is definitely life and I don't want it to die anytime soon. Even though we've heard that term too, that Boost is dead. The Adidas Boost technology though has earned a mainstay in my sneaker rotation every single week and my feet couldn't be happier. It's definitely the most responsive, well cushioned, and durable technology that there is on the market. One downside is the white Boost material does get a little bit dirty and some people say that the Boost bottoms out but honestly I've never felt that. Regardless, it's a technology that I stand behind 100% and I definitely am excited to see what the next iteration of the Ultra Boost is going to be, where the evolution of the product is going to take us in the next five years. If you guys want to buy any of the sneaker technologies that are mentioned in this video, I'll link some places to buy some in the description. And thank you guys for stopping by and watching the video. If you guys want to check the links in the description again to see more top five videos or any of the other videos that I mentioned, feel free to do so. Or go ahead and click the videos on the screen at this time. Thank you again for watching and we'll catch you guys for some more top five Tuesday videos very soon. Peace.